Okay, so thanks everyone for joining. So today is going to be a bit about how to job search. And as it's International Employability Week, it's going to be aimed a bit more at international students. So we will come on to that part. And obviously there's going to be a Q&A section as well. So we'll try and answer your questions as best as we can. We're going to go through some top tips um, and we'll start by introducing ourselves. So um, my slides decide to work. There we go. Um, so I'm Emma, I work in the uh, Professional Development Centre in the Employee Engagement Team and essentially I work to get different employers engaged with students um, to provide them opportunities. So that's anything from SMEs to large companies to promote part-time work, summer internship placements and so on. Um, we also organise things like the careers fairs, uh, webinars and things like that. So if you've attended any of those, that's sort of what we do. Uh, but I'm not student facing, so you might not know who I am in general. And whereas you will know who Raj is, so I'll let him, um, if he is your careers consultant, more precisely. Uh, but I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, everybody. My name is Raj. Um, I'm one of the careers consultants. So the careers consultants at the university are responsible for looking after all thoughts and questions that you have regarding um, employability. That's everything you have. Uh, you have questions about regarding job hunting, regarding your course and job options with it maybe module choice, maybe thoughts that you have around your dissertation and how it links to job hunting. Um, so, you know, everything that you need help with, would be that part-time work or graduate search work. Um, you have a dedicated careers consultant. I put um, a link where you can um, get more access to the services offered by the PDC, but also book appointments. And we'll put another link up at the end on how you go about booking appointments. But there is a really, really expensive Experienced team of careers consultants, so please, please do use them. Got a couple of quick questions. Hopefully, the audio is working for all of you. Um, haven't had any concerns apart from one person. The one person that has got one, I might just ask you just try and shut down Zoom and log back in again. That normally works. And yes, the recording will be available afterwards. And I believe one of our colleagues, Diana, will be sending out to all those that are registered. Back to Emma. And also one point before we move on why it's fresh in my mind, um, based on careers consultants, I didn't realise that the PDC existed until I was in my final year at Brunel. And I've managed to get on, you know, on top of things and was able to get a couple of work experiences in. But if you're in, so that means if you are in your final year, it's fine, you've still got time. And also if you're not, then that's great. You can make more of an effort, you know, and get involved and get things going now and get that support. Um, if you need it, because it saves rushing last minute when you're trying to find a job um, or, She's, or whatnot. So Emma's right. always um, brilliant at subtly um, hinting at me to add things in. So one thing I did forget to mention, thank you, Emma, for the subtle reminder, is we also look after you for three years after graduation. So please don't have this panic that, you know, I have to get everything addressed while I'm at university. We do look after you. The service is free of charge for all students at Brunel, regardless of whether you complete the course, that's an interesting thought. Um, but you know, anyone that's registered at the university has access to our services, careers consultants for three years after the course too. Yeah, so make sure you use them because they're all great at what they do as well. So moving on, um, I'm just going to go over sort of a couple of things that the professional development do and offer so you know a bit more detail about what we kind of can support you with. So Raj has pretty much gone over the careers team. So there's a careers consultant for every cohort and most of them have got experience in industry and are very well aware of what's going on and are able to advise really well. And as Raj just said, up to three years after um, finishing as well. So you've got lots of key support. If you're looking to do a placement, so this is usually what's embedded into the curriculum. So usually that year long or maybe a little less um, part of your course, there's a placement team again on hand to support you through that process. You will have a placement advisor um, to, to be on hand. And again, we will put a link in so that you know where to go to make an appointment with them as well, which is the same link as your careers team. You just select the right thing from the drop down menu. And then there's our team, so we are on hand, as well as there's sort of other events that come up as well, which aren't directly of what we do, but it all is in one place, and I will share the links for that with you as well. But if you want to get involved in a careers fair to come down and actually meet employers and talk to them so they remember who you are and make an impression, that's, that's an option. They have been virtual, so it's the same just online like we are now, but it is obviously different. And meeting people in person is, is a completely different vibe um, and the impressions made, I think, are more substantial um, 
And we will be having our first in-person event on the 23rd of May, which is the summer fair, which we'll mention again shortly. And we also host webinars, insight sessions, so you can really understand what employers want from candidates and what their company are all about, what vibe they are, if that fits in with what you want as a role and a company you want to work for. Also, vitally for international students, this gives you a chance to ask those all important questions about sponsorship, visas, and what works, what doesn't, if they can support your application and so on. And then there's other initiatives such as the Brunel Summer Internship Programme, which is open to first year students, Brunel Plus, which is a points-based scheme, which you can get um, recognition at the end of your um, year um, for all of your extracurricular activity um, and that goes on your peer record. There's the Ready Programme, mentoring, as well as volunteering. And as an international student, volunteering can be crucial because if you aren't able to get um, a job straight away, you want to build some experience and give back as well. Volunteering is a substantial way to get that in, get the experience and then go on to apply for other things. Um, and lots of the courses of volunteering are great as well. So not only are you getting that experience, but you can make an impact on some, some good initiatives as well. Um, Raj, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add. Just a very quick question that we, we will clarify the terminology. Actually, maybe I'll just do it now. Let's clarify this terminology between placement and what placement might be in some of um, some of the other international destinations um, and the UK. So placement typically is a term given that you do one year additional to your undergraduate degree. Now, very rarely do, do postgraduate courses have a placement. If they do, you would have had information about that placement officer and they would have already been speaking to you. So the majority of MSc courses you would be looking for a graduate job and that term placement means that you wouldn't be booking placement appointments you'd be booking careers appointments when you wanted to talk to somebody in the professional development center so just be aware that you know sometimes in international countries the term placement refers to the job that you get after your msc typically in the uk it refers to undergraduate one year out in industry during your undergraduate degree and most of you will be looking for a graduate job now and obviously when you when you when you complete your msc for those of you that are, have there is an exception and that exception means when the msc course has a bolt on short bit of experience a postgraduate internship or a postgraduate placement then you would have already been told about that and you would book an appointment with the placement officer that is dedicated to postgraduate research, but that is an exception. Most courses, you would be looking for graduate work. Hopefully that makes sense, but if it doesn't, please do type in the chat and I can clarify again. Back to Emma. So moving on, I'm now gonna talk about the different type of opportunities, which Raj just sort of just touched on, but looking sort of at the beginning of where you would probably start with um, gaining experience would probably be part-time work and then also volunteering, which is at the bottom here, which I'm pointing to, you can't see, um, but um, that sort of, they can be tied in together. So yes, I was saying, if you're finding it hard to get any paid work and you just need, because maybe you haven't got experience, um, it might be good to start off with volunteering. There are the Brunel volunteers team who are based on the concourse. You probably see them. They share a room with Job Shop, um, and you can go in and talk to them to see about the different opportunities that are available. Um, if not part time work, it's great to start building those transferable skills, and that might be something in like retail or in a restaurant. It doesn't have to be relevant to your course, which obviously, if it is, that's brilliant. Um, but that's that, that if even if it isn't, that's just valuable work experience too, which you can use those transferable skills. And if you meet with your careers consultant and advisor, they will talk to you about how you can, you know, use that, that experience and when applying for other stuff as well, because you can definitely draw on it. And um, then looking at internships, so maybe across the summer, you might want to use some of your time or majority of your time to do some real decent you know, a substantial amount of work that isn't sort of part-time here and there, flexible. It's like a substantial amount, but not as long as a placement. 
So there's lots of options there. A lot of companies do look for people across the summer. That might be because they have people that are um, going on their holidays. They have less people around and they start working on specific projects. So keep an eye out because they are a great way. Um, and as an international um, student, I believe your working hours change when you're not in um, term time. So you're able to commit to more hours at that point as well. So it's a good chance for you to get some hours in and some decent experience. Then looking at placement. So placement, as Raj sort of has touched on, he's gone over terminology there. Um, usually they're around a year if you're on your undergrad, um, but can be thin sandwich, which are two, six months, but I think the minimum is 24 weeks. Um, but if you are doing a placement as part of your course, your placement advisor will have all this information and go through it with you at the relevant point. Um, but again, that's a great time to have a substantial amount of work experience. It's part of your course, so it doesn't count towards any hours of um, your visa restrictions. You can do full time um, and you have nothing to worry about regulation wise. And then there's the graduate and full time roles. Now, these as an international student are a little bit more widespread um, and a little bit more hard to come by, but they do exist. And due to new visa changes and things, it might be more workable now because I believe those that have the new visa can work for a couple of years after they've completed their studies as well. So the, we're going to cover some top tips about getting a graduate role and things shortly um, that will be helpful. But there are roles that exist, so don't, don't worry that there isn't. Um, it just means there'll be a little bit more hard graft from you guys. Um, Anything else from me, Rod, from everyone? Yeah, let's just cover a couple of questions. There's a comment which I really I think is, is a really good one. It does raise a valid point. And someone has said um, it is possible for international students to technically do a summer internship, but the working hours have to be limited to 20 hours a week. Uh, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. The only issue with that is when you do a, a summer internship, typically they want you full time in the office. The reason that they're offering a summer internship is they want to train somebody who they would typically, the recruitment strategy is they would then like to take somebody on after that summer internship and they're investing time and effort so they can have a bit of a channel towards a graduate job. Very few part-time summer internships would be advertised. If you can find one, brilliant, excellent, we will definitely help you to apply. You are going to have to be very competitive in the marketplace, though, because you're going to be going up against people with experience. But definitely, if you can find yourself a part time summer internship that doesn't require you to be in the office full time and you would like to apply, then definitely we're more than happy to discuss that role with you and help you to apply. OK, but typically you will have to remember that you are expected to be on a full time basis at the university. You are in term time throughout the the whole of your MSc experience. Okay, so be very careful about that whole full-time nature of your course, as well as any visa restrictions you may have. Another quick question, Emma, let's just handle that. And that was, can I find a part-time job that is relevant to my course? There's somebody here that's looking for a particular job. I would advise you definitely book a careers appointment, try and explore those options. The option that you're looking for is the research assistant, and that might be more easily facilitated because of course we are an, an, um, an academic institution ourselves so maybe there is something that you can do in terms of networking with your current academics but again definitely worth trying to find part-time work not always easily available and I would just stress the value of the transferable skills even if your part-time work is outside of the realm that you want to attack once you graduate you still will be, be able to showcase the transferable skills um let's just got another question here let's see if i could just make out what that is what is the best experience counted in uk past experience in any industry okay i get it so i think that's a question about will my previous experience be that here or abroad still count the answer is definitely yes even if that was informal in nature definitely try and showcase your previous experience and again when you're putting your CV together, try and think about what was transferable about that experience. So the best experience, probably in any market, is any experience that showcases um, your work experience in that country, any experience that showcases transferable skills, 
and obviously any experience which highlights the most relevant subject matter. For example, if it's a biomedical experience that you're hoping to gain after your MSc, then if you've got some biomedical experience, that is definitely considered very relevant. So I would encourage you to discuss that with your careers consultants, but not just discussing um, the, the experience, but absolutely discussing how you showcase it on a CV and how you have to tailor that information to match the different needs of the job. Because one thing we're going to be talking about in a minute is you don't just send the same CV to every job you've ever heard of. Okay, so you do try and think about changing the CV and that increases your chances. Back to Emma. Okay, um, let me just get back. I'll just some things. Um, Got another so question while you do that. Sorry. Um, what is the time period of a volunteering job? Emma, do you want to handle that? It's, you're probably a bit more au fait with that. Yeah, so volunteering, so to be a volunteering role, um, it's defined as something that's flexible. Um, so they would be able to advertise it as a volunteering role if it was sort of a fixed hours full time because that would be like unpaid work basically. So it should be flexible. You don't have to do it. You can do it for as long as you want um, or as little as you want. But we would say, you know, have a substantial, um, not a substantial, I would say, there's no point in doing something unless you really don't like it and that's the reason you're leaving. But if you go there and you feel you're building and developing, then to do it for at least a few, maybe like three months, um, so that you can say that you spent, because if you do lots of different volunteering opportunities and you're not there for that long, when you put that on your CV, it's not going to look great if you've only been there for a short amount of time. Um, it's a little bit different compared to like an actual job. Um, but I would just say as long as you feel like you're developing um, and learning, stay there as long as it feels right. But there's no specific, it has to be flexible uh, to be um, fit with the definition of what a volunteering role is. So another question there, Emma, that is, can we handle both volunteering and a part-time job at the same time. Now you've got to be a little bit um, careful. Yeah. Your first commitment is towards your academic responsibilities. Okay, so this is very personal to all of you. Okay, I mean whether you can do it is something you need to you need to ask yourself questions about. How well do I manage my own time? How how well can I manage multiple commitments? It technically it might be possible, but be very careful that you don't go over and above the recommended hours that university suggests and, and be, be, be wary of the information Emma's just given you as well. Yeah, also just to note, so the, the university recommend no more than 15 hours work to have good life study balance and work. Um, however, with volunteering, it, those hours do count towards your um, work requirements and hours. So that if you wanted to, if you have a part-time job and volunteering, um, it might be more beneficial for you to, if you need the money to take the part-time um, paid work because that will count towards your limit of hours that you can work as well as the volunteering, if that makes sense. So you just have to make sure you're not exceeding your limit of hours if you're volunteering as well as, um, well, if just in general, if you're just volunteering, still make sure you stick to your hours that you have on your visa because it counts towards that too. And again, for those questions, please do book a careers appointment because, you know, you might want to have a discussion about what is going to be um, suitable for you in the short term, managing your finances like Emma's raised, or and also try and balance that with maybe what some of your long term ambitions and which one might be more relevant to that. So, you know, it can be part of a of a much bigger conversation, but I love your questions. Please do keep them coming. You'll realize that all these conversations and questions a part of much bigger conversations. And this is why we love doing these half an hour sessions because it's food for thought for all of you to, to try and get some you know, insight into a little area, but then it helps you to skyrocket your thoughts and maybe continue the conversation. Um, Emma, before we continue, should we just handle this other question as well? Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'm looking to get into summer work experience in a particular industry or sector other than the one in my course. Can I get some advice from different advisors at Brunel other than my subject? Yeah, the answer to that is yes, Sonny, you can, but it's going to be via quick query. So if you look on, I'll put the site up on in a minute, you can look on this particular website and you can find out which careers consultant is on duty on which day on quick query. 
When you book a careers appointment, you will get an appointment with the careers consultant that looks after your particular industry or your particular course. Okay, so if you want to talk to somebody different, you're going to have to utilize our quick query service. And then what you're going to need to do is look at our quick query rotor. I'll put this up and all of it will make sense when I show you the website. And then you, you've got a breakdown on the website of which careers consultant looks after which area. So you will be able to see them, but that's going to be a 15 minute appointment. Typically, the careers consultant will be able to give you advice about other areas, though. So don't be too concerned that, oh, you know, the, the, the person I'm talking to is only looking after law and I want to break into a different area. They should be able to give you some advice and guidance, which is transferable. Emma, just conscious of time. Shall I hand back to you? Yeah. So I'm just going to go over now where you can look to find some vacancies sort of within Brunel and what we have available to you. So we have the Brunel Jobs Board, and this is for off-campus part-time work, internships, placement, graduate roles, which you can go on this link here. Um, so you can, once you're on there, you can filter, you can filter by location, you can filter by type of role, you can filter by industry or subject area. Um, what we would recommend, and we're going to come on to that as well, is just do your research, look into what they do, what they offer, if sponsorship is an option. Sometimes there's a contact email, so if it isn't clear in the how to apply section, if their email's in there, you can just drop them a message um, and ask them to clarify. Then looking at Job Shop, which I mentioned as well, which is also where Bruno Volunteers is on the corner and um, on the concourse. Job Shop is for on-campus work. So you might say, as an example, you might want to work in the library or you might want to work within a different um, a department or to support um, uh, tours around campus or graduation, or just a couple of examples, that's where you would go for that opportunity. Um, so if you are living on campus and that's super convenient, you can look at opportunities there. They have um, a website which is different, which is linked here as well. Um, and that's for part-time work, okay? Um, and then Brunel Volunteers, you can go on and see the different uh, voluntary opportunities. Most of them are locally based um, around Hillingdon, um, maybe a couple in London, but they're all quite close by. Um, and you can see the different opportunities available there as well. So there's a couple of different routes. So that's off campus, on campus and Brunel Volunteers, which is mainly local. Um, so here we go. So I'm just going to move on now to employability events. So as I mentioned, there's several careers fairs throughout the year. Um, there's a summer placement careers and part-time work fair, which is happening on Monday, the 23rd of May. And that's going to be happening in person over at the Hamilton Centre, which is just around the back of where job shop and volunteering is. You enter that way. And we hope to have around 30 companies there that you can meet in person, have a conversation with and find out more. And they're a great way even if there's a company there that you think, oh, that's not relevant to my, my area of interest, it might be that they're an engineering company, but you do business and are interested in roles in HR, for example. Um, but they will have a HR team, so they might actually have a relevant role. So it's good not to pigeonhole, talk to as many employers as you can, just to get an idea, because you might have a great conversation and figure out that there's a perfect company for you. Um, and that's happening 12 until 3.30 p.m., so you can come along and have lots of great conversations and just it, even if you don't see anyone that you like you will feel more confident having networked and spoken with employers um, to build your confidence and then to find out other events that are coming up so we host another big fair at the beginning of the academic year which will be october and then throughout the year there are several other fairs like the stem teachers bio law fair um, to name a few that happen as well um, so you can find out all about those and other webinars and insight sessions on this What's On page here. And we regularly have different employees come in to talk about what they do. Um, so now we're going to move on to some top tips specifically around international students. So I'm going to go through some, Raj will pick up some, and then we'll take questions because let's look at time. We've only got a few minutes, so I'll go over these quickly. Um, number one, check eligibility. So you need to constantly think about if it fits in with your visa requirements and if they're able to offer sponsorship. So if you can't find that information online, I would say to try and do some research or find a good contact because 
before you commit to making a real decent application, you might want to double check first. Um, or if it isn't clear, then you can risk it and apply anyway. Um, but it's just if you want to put that time in. And um, be prepared to put in the time and effort to search, research, apply and repeat, because there are unfortunately less opportunities out there for students who are international or just international people from overseas. Um, but they are out there. So it just means you have to put in a little bit more time, effort um, to search those opportunities. Make sure you do your research because they are, there are less opportunities. So you want to make sure you've got your research done, understand the role and what the company do, and then apply and just repeat because it will pay off in the end. And then also be open and honest about your visa status. So avoiding talking about it, just waste time for everyone involved. And that could have been spent, you know, applying for a company who do support international students and you can hit the ground running and you could have been in a job if you keep wasting time. So um, my final point is also think outside the box and be open to new possibilities. That comes back into sort of not pigeonholing companies. So not putting them into a box and thinking they aren't right for me because there might be a perfect role within a company that in your head doesn't fit what your sector is, but they might be perfect. So just be open-minded um, and keep going really. Um, I'll hand over to Raj to talk about the next couple of points. Yeah, let's just carry on with this real practical mindset that Emma started off with. I think it's brilliant. Balance the quality of your applications with the quantity that you send. It's not about, oh, Raj, I sent 20 applications last week. Those applications, you have to believe and get them checked, but you have to believe they match the job. Hold the job up in one hand, pick your CV up. If your CV doesn't match that job, do not send it. The employer is going to have that job in front of them and they care about nothing else except their job. If they pick up a CV and that CV hasn't got content on page one that matches the job, you're right. They will put it down and pick up another CV. So please balance the quality of the CVs you send against the quantity. It's not just about machine gunning the same CV out into the marketplace. Every job is slightly different. The job description tells you what they're looking for. Do some research and then apply. Target your applications and use energy and effort and enthusiasm, it really, really does count for so much. When you're writing cover letters, when you're writing CVs, just the sheer fact that you've done some research and you've exerted some energy and effort shows in seconds to these recruiters. I was a recruiter in the past. You can see a cover letter that's actually had some research invested into it. Apply for roles where you believe you've got evidence and examples to share. I'm not saying if you don't have work experience, don't apply. What I'm saying is you're doing a degree which offers evidence and examples. Use what you're doing now. Tailor that to the job. Invest time and effort in articulating what you're doing at university and map it up to the job. Get the applications checked before you send them. Please, please, please utilize the, the services of the Professional Development Center. You've got people who have invested so much time and effort and passion into their work. They're an award-winning team. They invest so much of their passion into this work and they all do it because they love it. So you talk to these people and pick their brains about what can I do to improve? And then the final point, just a you know, similar point to what Emma concluded her bit on. It's about resilience. It's about not giving up. We understand it's difficult for international students. We understand that visa situation is not ideal. Yes, an employer will hire a home student because they don't have to go and sponsor or they don't have to do anything else. Some of you may say the post-study work visa should make things easy. Yes, it does. It definitely makes things easy. But recruitment as a whole, be that for a home student or international student, recruitment as a whole, is about managing your rejection. It's about improving, absorbing that rejection, going to see an expert, utilizing their advice and improving from one application, from one interview to one CV to the next. That's, you know, for, for me, that's the point that I'd like to end on. I think that's so critical for every job hunter out there, be they experienced candidates, 
with you know 10, 20 years of experience or be their graduates, the sheer fact that you've got to stay persistent and motivated. You've got to be in a good place. I was speaking to, uh, actually they're a friend now, but they were a student at Brunel, been out in the workplace for five years and they, and they want to attack the marketplace, but not feeling particularly good about where they are right now with their skills and experience. The first thing I advised that person to do was get yourself in a more positive and more motivated frame of mind so that you can start attack, attacking job hunting with the right mindset. Guys, we've come to the end of our session. In fact, we're a couple of minutes over, but we will stretch it a bit. If you've got questions, we would love to answer those. Again, we might not be able to do everything in this session. It might be a bit of a signposting back to your careers consultants for a deeper conversation, but is there anything you would like us to touch on? Please do type in the chat. And also just one thing to say, um, you guys have already like done a huge step, which is going away from your home country to, to study, which is huge. Um, not everyone does it. So you've already worked so hard to get to this point. So you know there's evidence that you know you've got you can achieve hard things. So you can keep pushing and, and going when it comes to finding a role if you want to apply for one here in the UK. Um, so just you know, keep going and persevering and, and you'll get there in the end. It might not happen straight away, um, but you obviously are, are, you know, ambitious enough to come and study in, in a country that is in your home country. So that, that can keep you going when it gets hard, if it gets hard for you. I've got a question. How quickly should we look for a part-time job after starting? You know, my, my, my thoughts on this are, are, are always the same. You know, when people say, oh, Raj, when should I start job hunting? When should I start looking for graduate jobs? When should I start considering part-time work? My answer is the same. Do it today. Start sooner rather than later. It's going to take you time to understand what part-time jobs are available. It's going to take you time to start thinking about your CV template. The quicker you start, the more... Um, success you're going to have remember this is not going to be something that you can learn overnight it might take time but definitely start sooner than later uh, and i'll get you started right now i'll put a little workshop up that might help you um, and it's just going to be about cvs but let me just throw that into the, the chat now emma do you want to handle the next question while i do that really quickly um, yep, so where will you find these slides? So these, I believe, um, Diana will be sending out to everyone that's registered, um, so you'll be able to access the links and everything. Um, I'm not sure about the ones from yesterday, if it was part of the same series, I'm sure Diana can share with you as well if you had registered. Um, Perfect. And then, do you want to do the next another, one, Raj? Yeah, I've got another one, and it's a brilliant question again. From a, from a person with the other brilliant question, it is relevant. Is it relevant to go for a part-time job relevant to our field or is any part-time work gonna make sense? Um, I touched on this earlier. If you can find part-time work, which is closer to your industry, then great. But all part-time work showcases competencies. And part of um, any recruitment strategy is to showcase the skills that are transferable to a job. So the answer to your question is yes, both are very relevant. If you can find industry pertinent work experience, then go for it. If you can, definitely come and talk to the careers consultants because you're going to be up for a lot of competition because a lot of people are going to be going for it. It was similar to your question about a summer internship. If you can find a part-time summer internship and they recognize that you're not allowed to go over 20 hours at all and they can't push it because that's going to risk your, your whole UK academic experience if they are willing to accept that then please 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 do come and see a careers consultant before you apply because you've got a golden opportunity there and we would love to help you with it brilliant i'm just guys, having some links in the chat yeah i saw that excellent excellent i guys please do look at the chat because i've been throwing in some stuff in there as well got a little cv workshop recording that would help you as well and ms throwing in some real good stuff in there as well Brilliant. Thank you so much. You know, please do. I think definitely I'd like to end on that just before I say my goodbyes and I hand over to Emma. I think that staying motivated, you know, and being in a good place when you job hunt, I think it's one of the biggest things for me. You know, you've, you're selling yourself. If you're going to sell your skills and experience, you've got to be in a place where you believe in yourself and where you think, 
yeah, I've read the job. Yes, I've invested time and effort. And now let me tell them why I think I'm a good candidate. Thank you very much for listening. I'm going to hand over to Emma now. Okay, thanks everyone so much. I hope um, that you all feel motivated after this and it encourages you to sort of get out there and going. Um, but you will have a recording of this. Obviously, if you have any questions, you can follow up with your careers advisor or placement advisor. Um, there's just one question here. Just look yeah, for a careers appointment for part-time work, guys, it's a careers appointment. Book your careers appointment. If you can't find an appointment with your careers consultant, you book quick query, but there will be now normally those careers appointments. If you look on a Friday morning, if you look on a Friday morning, most of our careers consultants in, in my team release their appointments on a Friday morning. So look on a Friday morning um, and you should be able to see appointments available. Okay. Okay, brilliant. All right, thank you everyone. I hope you have a lovely evening um, and we will probably see you at some point at an event or a talk soon. Thank you. Take care.